Hi boys and girls, it is Miss Sosha. I am coming to you with a little lesson about how you can use your shoes to make a texture rubbing. So texture is the way that something feels soft, smooth, bumpy, rough, hard. Um, and we can do texture rubbings all around our house. We can see what the carpet might feel like if we did a texture rubbing or a seashell or the wall without drawing on the wall, or even things outside, like what does bark feel like if you do a texture rubbing, or the sidewalk. So we'll go into that a little bit more in just a few minutes. But today what we're gonna do is we're gonna use something that we have at least two of, and those are shoes. And we are gonna do a texture rubbing of shoes. And we're gonna use things that we probably have around our house. So right here in our little art studio, Brooklyn's little drawing table, we have some paper and we have scissors, a glue stick, some crayons that we're gonna draw with. We have one of Brooklyn's shoes. And then we also have the crayons that we peeled last week and we used some of them for melting. So I'm gonna use just one of them and I'm going to do a shoe print rubbing. So on the bottom of our shoe, we have all these fun different designs. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a piece of copy paper, just plain paper out of the printer. You can even use the back of something that's recycled in the recycling bin. If there's something on one side that your parents don't need anymore, or something that's been messed up, use the other side. This is a great way to recycle and reuse. Then you take your crayon that does not have the paper on it. And you were going to hold it like it's a little log. So like your hand is like a like a little pinchy crane and you're gonna pick it up and hold it sideways it does not work if you hold it regular like we hold our pencils you have to hold it like it's a little log and you're gonna rub and sometimes I like to do this in my lap or um, you can use another person to help you out so you could have somebody hold it like this while you rub and you just want to push really hard and rub and when we're at school and we do this, I tell my boys and girls they have to keep their shoes on. But you're at home, so you could use um, your shoes off your feet. And then what I like to do is I like to draw a line around the shape of my shoe. And that kind of tells me where I'm going to cut. Okay, so all this stuff around the side, don't worry about it. If you don't have other paper to cut and glue it down to, you can draw your monster right on this paper, but I like to cut and glue because I think it just makes it look a little bit more interesting. But that is kind of up to you as the artist. So you cut around on this line here, like I'm showing you. And if you don't have scissors, you can always tear if you want, because that'll make it look even more interesting. It'll kind of make it look like it has wild and crazy hair. And then you can use your glue stick to glue it down. Again, if you don't have a glue stick, you can just draw your monster right on that white paper that you traced it on. So here's my red paper that I glued my footprint onto earlier, just a few minutes ago. And now I have my crayons that I'm gonna use for drawing. You can also use the ones that you took the paper off of, but I just happen to have some extra ones over here. So now I'm going to draw a face on my monster. So you can decide how many eyes you can decide what kind of nose your monster wants, if your monster is a nice monster, or if your monster is a silly monster. Maybe your monster has three feet. Maybe your monster has a tail. Oh my goodness. Let's see if you guys can see that tail. Maybe your monster has antenna, or maybe your monster has a hat. And you can going to draw a silly hat on your monster. Maybe my monster has antenna and a hat. And I used colored red paper. So let's see if my white crayon, ooh, my white crayon will color really well on red colored paper. Again, if you don't have construction paper, you can use the back of anything you have. You can even use notebook paper, okay? So now that we have a monster, you can draw hands on your monster. What we're gonna do now that we have our monster is I want you to think about where your monster might live. And when I do this during the school year, I do this with kindergarten and we read the book, Where the Wild Things Are. And we read all about Max and how he goes to where the wild things live and they have a wild rumpus. And so we talk about the monster's habitat, like where he might live. So you could draw a line 
for the ground line because we've learned a lot about how everything below this line is the ground and everything above is the sky. And you could tell me maybe he lives in a boat or maybe he lives in a cave. Maybe I'll have my monster live in a cave. Here's a dark cave, the entrance to his cave. I've heard lots of creative ideas. Like if you were a monster, where would you wanna live right now? Maybe you can think of something secret in your house. Or maybe your monster is a friendly monster. Maybe your monster is keeping you company. Maybe he's not scary at all or she's not scary at all. Maybe there's a whole group of monsters that are friendly monsters and they keep us company because we have to use our imaginations a lot right now. Maybe this monster just got back from the store and he has a giant lollipop. So there's lots of different things you can do with your monster. See how many of these you could do? You could do a whole group of them and make up a story if you wanted. So boys and girls, when you are finished with your monsters, I would love to see them. Upload them to your Flipgrid for your grade level or for the extended learning Flipgrid. And I can't wait to see what you guys make. Bye.